Guys, ChrisDComedy.com for Ticket Wikis. I'm in Salt Lake City and Denver this weekend. All the shows are sold out. I appreciate the good fans here. The only places left to see me, January 12th, El Cajon, San Diego. January 13th, the Wilter in Los Angeles. And then we have February 2nd in Nashville, Tennessee, February 3rd in Washington, D.C., and February 8th in Reno, Nevada. Those are my last dates, chrisdcomedy.com for Tiki Wikis. I'm really proud of this hour, so come see it. Come see it live. All right, guys, I have one date left of this two-year tour. It's in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, uh, December 16th. There's only about 100 tickets left, so get on that if you want to see me perform this show for the very last time. Other than that, new year, new tour with the guys from the Impractical Jokers. We're going everywhere. We're going to Highland, California, Las Vegas, Nevada, Tempe, Arizona, and we're also going to Miami on that cruise January 22nd, and then we're doing Hollywood, Florida, Tampa, Cincinnati, Youngstown, Ohio. Uh, we're doing Foxwood, Atlanta, Georgia, Mobile, Alabama and a bunch more dates are going to be added just go to impracticaljokers.com for those tickets Oh, when, when the, the sun, sun beats down, down and burns, burns the tar up on the roof And, and your shoes get so hot you wish your tired feet were fireproof Under the hay, babe Down by the sea yeah. Yeah. On, on a blanket, blanket with my hay, hay babe, babe is, is where I'll be, be. Under the hay, babe. Out of the sun. Under the hay, babe. We'll be having some fun. Under the hay, babe. People walking above. Under the hay, babe. We'll be falling in love. Under, Under the, the hay, babe. babe. Hey, hey, babe. Now that's how you come back together. We are back, folks. I didn't lie to y'all. I told y'all we was coming he, back. He he told y'all. He he told y'all we was coming back. I told y'all y'all didn't want to listen. You're back. Y'all didn't want to listen to him, man. <laughs> You're back. I'm like doing You're back down maybe 150 pounds. <laughs> hair up to the roof right now. You look amazing. Thanks. It's almost like you've turned into a beautiful woman. Thank you so much. You dun, look dun, 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 dun. <laughs> uh, 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 hold on. Uh, now, man, I feel, I feel like, like a woman. woman. Um, you look fantastic. Now, let's let's get to the bottom of it. Is it fasting? Is it fact? Is it Hello Fresh? What is it? Uh, it is uh, eating healthier, eating, making better choices, and not eating as much over a long period of time. Or is it diarrhea from the anxiety of the special? Both. Because somebody just shot a comedy special, and let me tell you, word on the street is it was amazing. Wow, thanks so much. I heard from, is it word on the street? Word on the street. We heard from, um, I heard from Ari that it was uh, fantastic. Um, I saw Adam Ray post a comment. Uh, I spoke to your manager who said it was unbelievable. Chris Johnson was like, dude, and then you sent me the voice memo. Yeah. And said that it was one of, because here's the thing, with comedy specials, a lot of people are putting them out now, and maybe they're special, maybe they're not, but you actually captured a special night. I hope so. With a special crowd. I hope so. And when I say that, it means most of the crowd was, they were, had special needs. Yes, we did yes. A, We did one for charity and then one for, one for them, one for me. Because that's the thing is, you know, everyone's doing a special. Sal told me you want to do something different. So we had the entire audience was actually special. That's correct. That's which correct. is which is something totally different. It's called, and that special, we did two. I did mine, which is called uh, Terrified. And I did that one, which is called Literally Special. Li right. Yes. 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 And that's a beautiful thing. And that's why I think, you know, people have... Keep referring to as the people's champ. <laughs> we did it at the Vic in Chicago, as if I didn't say it enough over the last fucking year. But right. uh, yeah, it was good. Uh, you know, my one thing was like, am I going to get an audience that has been as good as the audiences on the tour? Like, I wanted to be the best representation right. of, of a set, you know? Right. And they came, man, Chicago, shout out to Chicago, man. They came out. Chicago, if you, if number one, I think it, I think I, you know, close to New York, so I'm going to say New York is number one, but Chicago is number two. Chicago might be one, New York is one A, and Chicago might be one B. I that city is phenomenal. I love Chicago, dude. dude. I found out there's 71 neighborhoods in Chicago. Wow. 71. I went to two or three. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> you know, 
It's it's just I love I love it. I love that the river runs right through that thing. I love that the, you're right by the water there. All, all the different neighborhoods. The food is good. I love the sports in that town. It's just a great town. Guys, send us a video, and whoever wins this, I'm prepared to say this. Whoever wins this, whoever can actually do this, we will fly them out, and they can be they can watch a live Hey Babe from the new studio. Send us a video. You can send it to uh, at Hey Babe or Hey Babe Pod at Gmail. Let's see what this is going to be. Seventy one without taking a breath. Name all 71 neighborhoods in Chicago without saying um once. So just rapid fire, like if it was five, Queens, Brooklyn, Manhattan, Staten Island, the Bronx. I don't know if it's doable, but how do we know they're not reading? If um, we catch you fraudulent, we will fly you in and not let you know we caught you, and then we'll billy club you when you exactly. get Exactly. If, if we catch that as fraudulent, what we'll do is, yes, we'll 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 galooly we'll galooly you. We'll galooly you. Yeah. You know what that is, right? Gal um, Come on. Galooly? No. Uh, Nancy Kerrigan. Oh, Tanya Harding. Tanya Harding. That's it. Yeah. Tanya Harding. Is that not crazy? That's nuts. Can you can you refresh me on that? Okay. Did Tanya Harding know it was going to happen, or did Galuli take matters into his own hands to be like a, a a boyfriend that she that would turn her on? First of all, Galuli is one of the funniest <laughs> <laughs> one of the funniest hedge <laughs> names. Doesn't it feel like a uh, like a like a like a nickname for like an ass? Yeah. Like Galuli. Hey, you go. He slapped me right on the Galuli. This guy's being a Galuli. Yeah. Um, so what happened was, is Nancy Kerrigan was an amazing. I like it in the Galuli. There it is. So, so what? Two things are amazing yeah. about this. One, the actual event, which um, Nancy Kerrigan um, was was Billy clubbed in her knees before <laughs> a was before this her, is wild before like a skating event, and she was like, "Why, why?" That's like that iconic thing. The second part of this story that's amazing is. 20 years later, when um, Margot Robbie played her in the movie, yeah. I, Tanya, yeah. Tanya Harding got a standing ovation. I know. And so it's just society. It shows you like the fabric. We're terrible. It doesn't make any sense. We need to do better. Where you're like, are you a good guy or a bad guy? I'm going to switch legs. We raise up. We don't care. I'll, I'll go the other way okay. so it's symmetry. We don't care who we glorify it anymore. No. No, but listen, let's just go back and talk about this on a broad level. How insane is it that there's figure skaters out there, right, that are excellent at their craft, and they're going to go into competition together, and one of them is like, she's too good. Yeah. <laughs> and this guy with this big goddamn stash gets a billy club, and imagine being there. He just walked up to a woman that had skates on. That was also, by the way, an accomplished. I mean, this is this is Olympics, right? Tanya Harding was accomplishing her own right. Yeah, this is Olympics, right? He goes to an Olympian, an Olympian whose life has been to train, to keep their body as their temple, to make sure her legs, her ankles, her joints are all collagened up. They're the best they could possibly be. She's at the peak. She's competing at the peak of competition in the entire world. This, this just. Jamoke, he takes a billy Good club, word. he approaches her and starts beating on her legs <laughs> with a billy club. And think about her. Like, there's no way. If you asked her that day or before right. that in her life, name something that you think in a billion eons would never happen to you. She'd be like, well, just I'm on the ice one day and one man comes up to me with a billy club and just starts whacking me about the knees and thighs and legs. <laughs> yes. Like, there's no way. And then as she's getting it, what? And then also... Hello, if you're going to target her ankles and legs and knees, they're going to know it has something to do with the competition. Why not just whack her in the face, knock her out? Then you don't know if it has something to do with something else. Right. She's still going to be swollen, maybe a little loopy. She's not going to be the best in the triple axles. Right. Why hit her in the, sh in the shins? Yeah, why, why not just do something else completely? Why not poison her food? Why not? Exactly. And did it come from, I, I forget, did it come from Tanya? I think it was, was he, Tanya Harding was being her, extremely jealous. It was her boyfriend, right? Let's, let's yes. read into this, please. Could you imagine as you were walking out to do your special at the Vic Theater, Joe Gatto <laughs> came out and clubbed your knees? <laughs> Joe Gatto came out and just clubbed you. Because they were friends, <laughs> yes, right? They, were friends. they knew each other. It would be like if Joe Gatto came out and clubbed <laughs> your knees <laughs> before your special. Clubbed my mouth. Clubbed your mouth before your special. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I've been training. And knocked all your teeth out. You're like, why? I did say, no, no, Joe Gatto did didn't do it. Joe Gatto hired someone Joe else. Gatto, to do it. Joe and Gatto hired, hired Joe Gatto. To yes, do it. Joe, it would be like Joe Gatto hired <laughs> Benedita to do it. <laughs> so, so, so she knew about it. So, did they? Go, they got expelled. Did she? Did Nancy end up competing? Did he go to jail? And did she get disbarred from the Olympics? We'll find out in a moment. 
after this. Right after this. Yeah. Um, I think, well, first of all, if I'm not mistaken, wasn't Galuli played by our boy, Paul Walker Hauser? I think he might have been. Pa- it's not Paul Walker Hauser. No, it's P- Walter. Paul Walter Hauser. <laughs> Paul Wa- <laughs> no, that's Paul Walker and Doogie Hauser had a kid. <laughs> that's, that's a good character on <laughs> yeah. Paul Walker Hauser. Um, Yes, so I what I want to say the story is, and again, you guys have the internet right in front of you. You can tell us how wrong we are, but what I think happened is she got clubbed. Nancy Kerrigan got clubbed. <laughs> like a could, seal. Like a seal. Could never compete again or competed in like, you know, the not, not no. real Olympic events. Yes. And then Tanya Harding got disqualified, tried to say it wasn't her, and they were like, but your boyfriend did it. And she was like, yeah, but that could be a coincidence. And yeah. And then I think they want to read this. Yes. And I think that she was never allowed to skate again. I want to say she went to jail. Tanya Harding. Well, I think she should have. No. Look. Yeah. 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 Why? Yeah. And and he did it in the locker room. Why does this woman have a stethoscope? What are you going to do? Just to see if the knees are okay. (laughs) Yes. We still have heart. We still have blood flow to the knee. (laughs) (laughs) Um. So, all right, let's, let's, let, can we, do you mind if we narrate this from the beginning? Let's narrate. I, and then, I really don't know. Yes, let's narrate it. And, 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 and who do you want to be? Um, well, actually, no, this is just a report. Is that the, to- is that the top of the article, Bob? By the way, this is People Magazine. My dream in life is to one day be in People Magazine. It's all I've ever wanted. Oh, I've been in there. It's not a big deal. No, but you were wearing faces in the crowd, celebrities, they're just like us. Uh, I don't remember. See, because that's something that used to always be in my mother's bathroom. And I remember I'd be like a little kid in the bathroom, like reading People Magazine celebrities. Oh, I mean, it's a big deal if you like get on the cover. I don't know. I think I was like, they did a, I don't know. I have no idea. It is a big deal. Okay. I'd like to be like Time Magazine Man of the Year. That's That'd be nice. That's it. Or Sexiest Fellow. Who is that? Esquire? GQ. Should one of the Impractical Jokers be People's Sexiest Man Alive? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, well, they added us in that issue. Right. I was in the issue of Sexiest Man Alive, the one that Paul... Paul Rudd was on the cover of. And then did was it all, should one of you be? Well, I actually say yes. Yeah. I don't think any of us should be, but but it was nice just to be thought of. Who is the sexiest joker? Imagine we asked the crowd and like they just had a resounding one name. <laughs> <laughs> like 100% zero, zero, yeah, like zero. it's 100% one of them. <laughs> you could put, put a poll up. Who is the sexiest joker? Let's see. Yeah. I think it's going to, I don't know who it would be. Who the hell knows? I think every, People it, always have, all have their favorites. Um, okay. Right. So it, Go ahead. Do it, baby. Do it. All right. So it was the sports scandal that rocked the world. <laughs> Seven weeks before the 1994 Olympic Winter Games, Tanya Harding skating rival Nancy Kerrigan was clubbed on the knee by an assailant. Ass- assail- well, assailant. Ass- assailant? Assailant is fun. It was a fun word. That's assailant. not used enough. An assailant. Yeah. yeah. I was assailed. Authorities soon determined that Harding was involved and that her ex-husband, Jeff Galuli. <laughs> it sounds like a made-up last <laughs> name. It does. It's like when you're pressed for a name and you're like, I don't want to say my like, name. Uh, Galuli. Uh, Jeff like, Galuli. Like if I ask my eight-year-old, hey, honey, I want you to make up a name <laughs> yeah. of a really scary man. Yes. She would go, uh, Galuli. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wait, wait. So uh, it was her ex-husband then? Is that what that's what that implies, right? I would imagine. He was already her ex. Maybe he was trying to, he was trying to get trying back to get- and give her his own Billy Club, maybe. It, there it is. Okay. For the media, the narrative was perfect. Kerrigan was the pretty, poised, innocent victim. Harding was the rough around the edges assailant. Assailant. Yes. From the wrong side of the, the tracks. tracks. Where was she from? Eight Mile. I think she was from Detroit. Where was Tanya Harding from? I don't know. Decades well, later, Margot started, Robbie. Did the tracks historically did tracks divide classes of neighborhoods? Why, where did we get that? Uh, where wrong did we get side that? of the tracks. I, I would have to say that, yes. Idiom, where do we get that? Train tracks. I would have to say that I would think that train tracks kind of was a dividing line in the neighborhood. Hmm. Um, okay. The expression, wrong side of tracks, come from the idea of a town divided by a railroad track. In 1929, Thorn in My Side Smith wrote, in most commuting towns, there are always two sides of which the tracks serve as a line of demarcation. There is the right side and the wrong side. But why did they, okay, whatever. Whatever. Nope. Just know that the wrong side was Harding. Yes. Harding's on the wrong side. All right. Decades later, Margot Robbie immortalized the infamous skater in I, Tanya, a 2017 biopic that offers a surprisingly sympathetic view of Harding's life before, during, and after the shocking event. So here's the lead up. Okay. Up next on the lead up. Ahead of the 1994 attack, the rivalry between Kerrigan and Harding was gaining steam. Choo-choo. Did I'll do like where where appropriate and where I can think of it. I'll do little little sounds. That's why it's great having you back. Okay. The two competed in the 1992 Olympic Games in Albertville, France. Let's see. 
where Kerrigan took the bronze medal just one step ahead of Harding, who came in fourth place. Okay. Harding was the Ooh. favorite before the 92 games after she made history by becoming the first American woman to land the triple axel in competition during the fall of 1991. She was never able to perform it in competition again after that year. Wow. Kerrigan, on the other hand, became America's sweetheart after the 1992 games and went on to the sponsorship deals and public acclaim that eluded Harding. Okay. The two competed against each other leading up to the 94 games as they vied for a spot on the U.S. Oh, Olympic team. Oh, wow. So this has been bubbling. Okay. okay? Now let's get to it. <laughs> the attack. Less than two months before the games, Kerrigan was attacked at an Olympic practice session in Detroit. Oh, it was Detroit. As the cameras rolled. It was later found out that- As the, the cameras rolled. That's another thing. What are you doing, Galuli? Yeah. It, You're doing it in the place and right on the knees and with the cameras rolling. Doesn't make any sense. It was later found out that the assailant, Shane Stant, had been hired by Harding's ex-husband, oh, Galuli, and her bodyguard, Sean Eckhart, though Harding denied knowing him in the ESPN 30 for 30 documentary series episode about the attack. Wow. Dun, the, dun. No, what's ESPN's? Oh, I forget. I missed it. The that. attacker meant to break Kerrigan's right leg to keep her out of the competition, but merely bruised it. Oh, Despite my God. Her, I mean, what a... The, That's, I mean, I mean, this is a cluster. Could you imagine? I mean, yeah. Like, you don't even you, get the job done. It was like hitting her with like a Fisher-Price club. Oh, my God. Despite her injury, Kerrigan famously went on to compete in the 1994 games in Lillehammer, Norway, where she nabbed the silver wow. medal while Harding came in eighth place after having I trouble with her laces. laces. Oh. Ah, karma is a bee. It is. You see that? You came in eighth because of your shoelaces. Because of your shoelaces. And she came in fourth with a bruised leg. I'll tell you, I'm not saying I'm better than Shane Stant, but if I was going to attack her with the billy club, that leg would have been broken. 100%. Following the attack, media speculation surrounded Harding and Galuli, and they eventually blamed each other in interviews with the FBI. Galuli accepted a plea bargain in exchange for his testimony against Harding and spent six months in prison. Stan Eckhart and getaway car driver Derek Smith also served time <laughs> Jesus, in prison. Jesus, <laughs> there's a whole... Now there's a getaway driver? Jesus, they served time in prison for the attack. Harding long disputed her involvement, but was eventually convicted of hindering the investigation into the incident. She received three years probation, 500 hours of community service, and 160 thousand dollar fine and was ultimately banned from the u.s figure skating association for life for life for life now the now, aftermath now yeah now one thing though did she have one hundred and sixty thousand? did she actually pay that out like shouldn't she have gone to jail she should have so are they saying she knew about it did they saying she knew them and knew after it happened it didn't say whether she helped conspire she that's the thing with the law is like if you have a good enough lawyer What's the thing with the law the thing with the law is if you have a good enough lawyer you don't have to do anything ever that's right. just the thing with the law right so okay kerrigan was later inducted into the figure skating hall of fame as in 2004 and served as a special correspondent during several olympics it would be it would be crazy if someone clubbed her these days oh my god like what would that be for that would be insane you know like she somebody, got a double club no one gets a double club over somebody might do i mean copycat you're right. You're yeah. right. For no reason, just to, other than to be part of, like maybe feel like what it was like to be part of that. Right. But I would, I would be like, or just now maybe they're hearing us now and they're saying, what a wild story would be if she got clubbed again, and maybe that this might inspire somebody. And then, but we're not going to jail for that. We're, we will no, not. No, we we do not condone not it. that. We don't want to do that. We're not Galulis over here. Yeah. I'm just pontificating and extrapolating. I ain't no Galuli. Here's the thing. So. Babe, I have been preparing for my comedy special, and one of the things that I was doing was trying to get, like, make sure every night I get good night's sleep, mm -hmm. because poor sleep can lead to weight gain, it can lead to mood issues, lower productivity, and it worked for me. Well, I'll it tell you what, yes. I know for a fact that you've been using Beam Cocoa Powder, dream, Beam Dream Powder, yeah. to get yourself, because you are not fat, your skin looks amazing, <laughs> and you've just been so personable lately that I was like, something's different and it's beam dream powder and we've been talking about this for a long time now the beam oh, yeah. dream powder okay it's it's uh their healthy hot cocoa for sleep today our listeners get a special discount on beams dream powder their best-selling healthy hot cocoa for sleep with no added sugar now available in delicious seasonal flavors like cinnamon cacao Oof. which i've had sea salt caramel i haven't had and white chocolate peppermint i've intrigued. had intrigued is it good i've had it's amazing Can't white wait. chocolate peppermint's i think the best one all right i'm gonna try that next better sleep has never tasted better a recent clinical study revealed dream helped 
93% of users wake up feeling more refreshed, and 93% reported that Dream helped them get a more restful night's sleep. If you want to try Beam's best-selling Dream Powder, take advantage of their biggest sale of the year and get up to 50% off for a limited time when you go to shop beam.com slash hey babe the discount is auto applied at checkout no code necessary that shop beam b-e-a-m dot com slash hey babe up to 50 percent off i'm doing it i can't wait i want to try that white chocolate pep try that baby yeah ba -da -ba -ba -ba. i'm my chocolate pep in it ba um, it's a hey babe holiday on doordash folks i use doordash in chicago yeah dude you can use doordash anyway i love doordash because first of all, the deals they they they're just amazing. The deals they have are amazing. And you, when you want to just get, when you're really craving something, you're like, man, I just need to get something delivered to my mouth right now. DoorDash is the go-to. Here's the reason I love it because we travel. I land in Chicago. I don't know what's what. Huh. I pull up the DoorDash app. I'm getting everything. In, in categories, I'm getting reviews. I could make my own choice. And then it's places that don't normally deliver. There's this place called the Little Goat Diner. Shout out in Chicago. Oh, I know that place. You know it? It's amazing. Yeah, it's so good. And I used, uh, I ate there. And then I was like, I was craving it again. I door dashed Little Goat Diner to my uh, Bang. Airbnb. Door, and, and what they have, they have this thing called the Dash Pass member where you can enjoy exclusive offers and perks all season long. You get a $0 delivery fee and reduced service fees on eligible orders. If you're looking to save even more, the Dash Pass is the way to go. Yeah, these deals just started, but they won't last long. Shop holiday savings on DoorDash now. Use code HEYBABEHOLIDAY to get 50 percent off up to a $10 value when you spend $15 or more at a convenience grocery or select retail stores on DoorDash because they don't just do restaurants. Uh, use code Hey Babe, Hey Babe Holiday. Terms okay. apply. So from order now and get the gift list, the grocery list, and the other holiday essentials for less with DoorDash from December first to the twelfth. So run out of time. Use code Hey Babe Holiday to get fifty percent off up to a ten dollar value when you spend fifteen dollars or more at convenience grocery or select retail stores on DoorDash. Again, terms apply. So you said it, so I'll say it yeah. then. Okay. These deals just started, but they will not last long. Shop holiday savings on DoorDash now. Use code HEYBABEHOLIDAY to get 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $15 or more at convenience, grocery, or select retail stores on DoorDash. Terms apply. The former skater returned to the spotlight competing on season 24 of Dancing with the Stars. I missed that one. Missed that one. The married mom of three who danced alongside, you ready for this? Artem Shignisvevs. Okay, I would take that as Artem Chigvinstev. Artem is that what you said? I don't know what it is. Made it to week seven in wow. the popular television competition. I, I would think she was would be a front runner because figure skating and doing those flips and stuff, she's wholly athletic and her body is able to go around and around. Yeah, but if you're not on ice sometimes, unless maybe she tries you dancing with the stars with her skates on on hardwood flooring. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing I want to know right now If we pull up Like you know how they do Those packages Where they show them uh, Rehearsing and training And yeah. the Dancing with the Stars Do you think he held her like this And she spun like a billion times In a row <laughs> yeah. If they didn't do that That's why she lost the competition That's why she lost okay. Now Galuli actually changed his name To Jeff yeah. Stone <laughs> <laughs> What if that said Greg Stone <laughs> And we uncovered it right now Well Greg Stone's re real know, last name not. Is not Imagine his name is Greg Galuli <laughs> <laughs> Galuli changed his name to Jeff Stone and receded from the spotlight, though I, Tanya screenwriter Stephen Rogers, no relation to Aaron, told people he agreed to be interviewed for the first time since the incident for the movie. Eckhart, who later changed his name to Brian Sean Griffith, <laughs> died in 2007 from natural causes at the age of 40. Oh, my God. How do you die from natural causes at 40? It's karma. It's karma. It's karma. It's karma. It's credit karma. So for Harding, life post scandal proved difficult. According to a 2008 People profile, Harding was arrested twice, once for a DUI, once for an attempted suicide. <laughs> How do you get arrested for an attempted suicide? I mean, everything she does is attempted. That's Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> she can't close the deal, this woman. That's what she it is. She can't get the gold. She can't break a leg, and she can't commit suicide. She's Tanya almost. Yeah. The couple welcome... 
in 2010, Harding wed Joseph Jen's Price. She can't, everybody's got three names. Everybody, everybody's got the, everybody's got three names. Uh, yeah, everybody. The couple welcomed a son the following year, and Roger said Harding lights up whenever he's mentioned. Well, I should hope so. I would hope so. That's just a right. normal human. Lights being. up meaning smokes crack or lights up emotionally. Right, yeah. <laughs> right. What is she? Yes, I think she was also in a homemade pornographic. Uh, um, yes, she was cinematic thing. Yes, she was, and we'll, yeah. we'll get to that next. Harding, roll that clip. Harding <laughs> surprised fans and even Robbie herself when she attended the LA film premiere of I, Tanya. The former skater was seen wiping away tears as she posed with Robbie on the red carpet. Like Kerrigan, Harding also competed on Dancing with the Stars, appearing in season 26. Oh, I mean, it's right there. If they were on the same season, oh my. that would have been the, I mean, that would have been the, the highest ratings ever. Right. People would have been like waiting for it to happen. Yes. And then in season 26, four-week event to 2018 featured only athletes. Harding was paired with pro dancer Sasha Farber and placed third overall. Wow, the best she's ever done. She's never gotten even into medal contention until Dancing with the Stars. And then, but, and, oh, yeah, and, oh, yeah, third overall. Third, All get right. a bronze. And although Harding continually denies her involvement in the scandal, she has remorse about the Kerrigan scandal. Of course I feel guilty for what happened, she said in the 2008 profile, but I can't dwell. I have to go on living. Okay. Is that the end of that, babe? Is that the end? See, here's the thing. First of all, shout out Margot Robbie for playing I, Tanya and Barbie. Have you seen Barbie, by I the have. way? Let me tell you something right now, Sal, and I'm going to look you in the was... eye so you know that I'm not lying to you. Yeah. I, I, I want you to understand what I'm about to tell you. My daughters, okay? My daughters, Barbie, let me tell you something. The movie Barbie, I bought it, call it two months ago. I have seen Barbie. Hmm. I have seen the movie Barbie from front to too Can bad. I guess? Can I take a guess? Take a guess. How long I'm not going to make this up. How long have you had it? I've had it for, let's say, two months. Okay, and what do you have it on? Digital? Like they, they, they yeah, on it? Amazon Prime. So they, Bought it, own it. They know how to use the Amazon Prime? Yep. Or they have to ask you? Uh, the eight-year-old eight knows how all, to do it. The two-year-old has to ask me. The two-year-old's okay. first... But the two-year-old can ask the eight-year-old. She can ask the eight-year-old, okay. and it can be put on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, two months ago. I want to say that you've seen this film. I bet. Let me ask you one other question. Do they ever watch it more than one time in a day? Yes. Multiple times, almost every day Understood. of my life. I'm remembering my childhood now. Yep. Okay. Um, it ends and then it begins. I'll say you've watched it 57 times. 65 times is the final answer. Are you serious? Yeah, 60, Are you serious? I've seen Not that movie 65 times from the beginning to the end. That movie, if you have girls or a gay son, Barbie, you will watch that at all times always. There is no better. And the thing about Barbie is even now. What's the thing about Barbie? It's it's a kids movie, but it's for adults. Like I can sit there and watch it, and I've I didn't even it. think it was a kids movie. <laughs> no, yeah, it, it it's it's one of those things where, and now only on the sixtieth, maybe the fiftieth, let's call it the fiftieth time, did you were like, oh, that's Ryan Gosling, right? That well, no, my daughter, my older one, asked one of the Barbies, Harry Neff is you know, transgender. She goes, was he born a man? That one, that Barbie. I said, I was she born a man? I said, I think she was. I think she was born a man. And then she was like, oh, okay. She goes, that can happen. And I said, I said, uh, yeah, you know, that that's okay. She goes, like, you can just turn into a man. I said, what do you mean? She was like, like, is that like something that can happen to like me? Even like, could I like turn into a man? Yeah. And I said, no. I mean, you have like it doesn't just happen naturally. Right. You have to get a surgery. Right. And I said, did you know that you had to get a surgery? She said, no, I just thought that that could happen. Mm. And I'm like, fair enough. Imagine we didn't know and like at a certain point you can just change like you and just, nobody knows the, the hand they're dealt like you just grow into it yeah like it's an evolution process for a percentage of the population and you didn't even you don't know until it happens yeah, wow. yeah i possible. wonder how we'd all feel and think then there yeah mm. that's it um yeah my young niece was watching i walked in one time and she was watching platoon and then she turned to me and said do we really need to be over there and i was like we made the choice to be over there. <laughs> yes. You know, we didn't we have to do it. Yes. I don't think we should have been over there. I don't think we should. Yeah. She said, what exactly happened there? Like atrocities? And I said, where'd you learn that word? And she said, uh, I, I listened to you when you talk. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. My, um, it's <laughs> Taylor, Taylor Swift, Swift person is, of the year. She deserves it. I was going to say, no way. Her? How? <laughs> <laughs> what has she done? I'll is, tell you is, what. Is, I don't is, know if she could sell out four shows at the Vic. <laughs> <laughs> she might need a little extra help like I did. Yeah. Uh, which we did, by the way. So thank you, Chicago. So, of course, uh, dude, uh, I... so let me ask you a question. Is she going to get a resounding, um, which she might already have the contingent of, but like, is there going to be any like, all right, we've, uh, what's it called? Back, back, uh, 
backlash, backlash? backdraft, like, backgammon. Yeah, she gonna have any backgammon from this? She gonna get she it? Could, she she could get backgammon from this, but I, as I say, it's and, too much. Right? As what I, as what they've been saying since biblical times, haters gonna hate. Yeah. So haters gonna hate. I think what Taylor Swift has done is never really been done in music. For me, I'm not. And again, that, was that Ice T uh, versus three sixteen to three eighteen? Yes, haters gonna hate. That's what it was. So to each their own. Another biblical quote. For me, though, when I'm watching a movie or when I'm listening to a song, I'm not thinking about the writing and the, you know, d is it capturing this essence or that essence? I'm just saying, does it make me feel good or not? Do I like it or not? I don't try to delve deep. Like I saw the movie Napoleon and a lot of the reviews where it didn't Dynamite? capture this. Napoleon Dynamite. Okay. And and I was like, you know, I, I, I liked it. I just, I thought it was fine. Like yeah. it, it entertained me for two hours. Yeah. Like what? That's all this is. I feel like sometimes people take themselves too seriously. With it's like, stop trying to break down every single one of Taylor's songs. Just get, just get out there and start singing. Oh yeah, I just don't know. I'm just saying. Like, do you do, do you, like? What do you do? You feel? How do we feel about her on the whole, Taylor? Swift? I don't have an opinion, but I mean, like, she is. Like is she the most whole. famous? I'd like to feel her whole. Understood. Is she the most famous person in the history of the world right now? I would say in the history of the world, like not counting Jesus and, and the prophet Muhammad. She's got to be close, right? I would say right now, living, breathing human beings, Taylor Swift has to at least be in the top three of most famous people. I think the most famous people in the world. Again, I'm just going to take a shot. I'm going to stand by it. I think all by name, by visual, both like, what do you think they are? Who do you think they are? I still think it's Barack Obama. Oh, really? I still, I just think he was such an iconic figure around the world. I think it's, I think the three are Barack Obama, Taylor Swift, and the Pope. I think okay. the Pope is just a religious figures are big. Barack Obama, Taylor. So like, let's call Elon Musk now. He's up there, but I don't think that he's more famous than because you're talking about Michael, like Michael going Jackson? into the deep jungles of New Zealand. Do My they know Elon Musk or do they know Taylor Swift? Well, Michael, ja is she bigger than Michael Jackson? No. And speaking of Michael Jackson, I have something important to tell you. Okay. Okay. So Michael Jackson, now granted, this isn't from the group chat. This is on Twitter. There's a lot of speculation going around. Pimp, I know you're into conspiracies with stuff like this. There's a lot of stuff going around that Michael Jackson, like, is it like was framed for everything and really isn't, really isn't the, the you know, like with the young kids and all that, like really isn't. But he's like Roger Rabbit. Exactly. Because here, here we go. Here we go. So, so. So um, Wait, this is just coming out now. Why well, didn't it come out during the whole hubbub? Well, no, this because this is one of those things where it's like getting to the point now because of the internet with all like you know what they say like with the government like if you mess with the one percent of the Illuminati whatever they'll like take you out. So this allegedly and the, yes, I know there is no real way to prove if this is AI or not. But supposedly, according to all the Twitter comments and according to everything, this really is Michael Jackson's very last phone call with his doctor. Okay, this is his very last phone call with his doctor and listen to what he said. First, listen to this fart. First, listen to this real fart that I did on ca that I that this morning walking my kids to school. That's that. Ooh, that's, and then that's a that's then, a questionable one. Here we go. This is June 24th, 2009. Michael Jackson's last phone call to his manager, Dieter Weisner. He claimed that people were after him and they were going to kill him. So here we go. Tell me if this is true, not true, AI, not AI, because then this goes into a large conspiracy of Michael Jackson. Okay, all right, so let me read it then. It's hard to hear, so let me let me read it. So he's saying, I'll, I'll, I'll read it. What, what's wrong, did he Michael? Have, did, did he, have, did he had AT&T, must have been. I know. Michael says, I don't know if I should tell you this. I don't know who may be listening. There may be a group of people. They want to get rid of me. They don't want me here anymore. I don't understand. The doctor says, what do you mean talk to me, to his manager, I meant. I can't talk about it, he says. On the phone. I don't know what's going to happen. This is the day before his death. I'm running out of minutes. I'm running out of minutes. <laughs> In my soul. Just a cell phone God joke. Knows they could shoot me. Oh, they could shoot me. They could stab me. 
they could frame me and say I overdosed on drugs. <gasps> he didn't say that. I swear to God. He says that's in the call here. He says the last parts, they could shoot me. They could stab me. They could frame me and say I overdosed on drugs the day before his death. Now, the thing is, is, is that, was that, you know, AI generated? Was that real? Well, Could that be a million things? But if that is real, then it's one of those, because I think now what's well, happened. Didn't he overdose on drugs? Yes. So if that was the last call, do you think maybe he could have been high? Right. But, but it kind of feeds into like, like these conspiracies of like, you know, like, like, you know, like the conspiracies with like, um, Chester from Lincoln park and uh, uh, no. and and um and the guy from um the the lead singer who died from Soundgarden, Chris Cornell. Chris Cornell. I and didn't know there was any kind of conspiracy. There's a connection, and then one of them, if you Google it, there always is a conspiracy. I mean, Sal's mainstream famous enough. Have you never felt the Illuminati's presence in any party or anything? <laughs> you are the person in my life that gets gives me the most anxiety that I didn't have beforehand. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. I don't. Where would I come across Illuminati? I don't know. I don't know where the relationship begins. I guess a party or famous. Uh, I don't. Party. I don't think they basic cable. I don't think they they mess with. Right. <laughs> well, they but the, but the connection between Chris Cornell and 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 Chester from Lincoln Park is that, and I think Anthony Bourdain is they all died in the same way. They were all investigating child. They were all investigating um, child sex trafficking with like the government hypes and the government. Again, this could all be oh, wait, 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 BS. What? No, it's, 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 who, who, Google, who, Google, who please. Did, who was investigating? They were investigate like they themselves like Google um uh Chester from Lincoln Park Chris was Cornell the Chester from Lincoln Park child sex trafficking uh you know investigating yeah here we go I believe that Chester Bennington from Lincoln Park was murdered all right this uh, is along from, with yeah, this Chris is, Cornell this is an article by Spook and, yes <laughs> okay um he, I mean it might be I don't know well, I don't that's, know that's the, the, the I don't know the in depths of the, but I'm I'm just trying to understand what you mean about the ch the child welfare that they were they were stumbling upon real evidence of the government's involvement or po very powerful people's involvement in child sex trafficking because there's a rumor going around that the elite or some people are probably banging their hands off their stool and are saying it's not a rumor, right? They're, which whatever I don't know I have no idea. Um, so they 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 are saying that like child like you know like sex trafficking is something that, like the very powerful of the world the one percent if you will want to do that kind of stuff right so that they also thought that we were ordering pizza and, and ordering right, children the, order, that, ordering stuff off of like a wayfair and ordering the, the, like the problem is the problem is every every conspiracy can be nullified and then everything that we be think is true can be nullified so you really don't know what to believe ever but here we go wait oh they were all working on the same film together there it is so the can, the claim avici or can you scroll up a little bit pimpy i'm sorry avici who passed away chester bennington anthony bourdain and cornell all died by suicide while working on the film silent children so a year-old conspiracy that recently gained traction on social media is linking four celebrities' deaths to a long-abandoned film project. Isn't it interesting that Avicii, Chester Bennington, Anthony Bourdain, and Chris Cornell, sick. What does sick mean when they do that? I, In parentheses. I always see that. What does that mean? Yeah, I, I think it means like they, they've extracted something from right there. Or I, you know, I should know because I see it all the time and I, I, don't I, know I what forget that and I'm like, I gotta... Yeah. Intentionally so written. But what does that, even, what does that mean? Yeah, I, Thanks for nothing, Venetia. So that's in this manner. So that's in this manner. You're getting further from my I understanding. Don't to, I don't understand how it's applied. Oh, I like your New Balances. Um, What's up, guys? Dr. Squatch is a new soap product that I've been using. I got sent these bars because they're with the podcast now, and I have to tell you right this second, I love them. I really do. They are. They smell so. They smell so good. This cool, fresh aloe, bay rum, pine tar. They have all these cool sense wood barrel bourbon my favorite is birchwood breeze this is what it looks like um before i had before they sent me this i really didn't have a soap that i would use i meant my regular soap this, this is definitely going to become my regular soap um stuff to know about a high performance natural products it's 98 natural b corp certified there's no harmful ingredients um it just smells great and it's a good holiday stocking stuff i'll tell you that much just load this up in a stocking, you buy three soaps right now, you get three soaps free. That's 
eight bucks in savings. That's like getting each bar for four dollars. And this is like a really kind of like artisanal type of product. Uh, there's free shipping that's valid for new customers only. Uh, yeah, right now, Dr. Squatch is offering our listeners a huge savings. All new customers will get three free bar soaps plus free shipping with any purchase of three bars. Just go to drsquatch.com slash hey babe. That's Dr. Squatch, D R S Q U A T C H dot com slash hey babe to receive this buy three, get three uh, offer. Uh, ch -ch -ch slash hey babe uh, to buy three soaps and get three free it's time to get all the daily routine essentials you'll need to start feeling good and smelling like a man today guys if you are uh, uh, serious about your oral care like I am then you're going to love Quip okay one thing big thing for me is I used to take a regular toothbrush on the road with me when I travel and do you know doing comedy and going on the road this is amazing because I get to bring the Quip Travel toothbrush with me, and it is electric boogie woogie woogie. So I love having an electric toothbrush with me on the road. It's a game changer. Okay. They also have this great water pick, which I use, um, trying to get my flossing habits better. So this water pick is really cool. They got the anti-cavity toothbrush. There's a whole suite of products now equipped. When I first when I first found out about them, I just got a toothbrush. And now they have everything. They even have gum. And mints, they sell them in these. I got some refills for my gum and mints. I put them in this little dispenser. It makes me feel like a kid again. See, it's fun stuff. <laughs> um, anyway, good health starts with good habits. Quip makes it easy by delivering all the oral care essentials you need to care for your mouth. For the toothbrush, time sonic vibrations with thirty second pulses guide guide you into a. Dentist recommended two minute clean. You got to make sure you get all two minutes in there. Um, the water flosser, it hits all the right spots. It got gentle or deep clean pressure at the touch of a button. It's extra wide. It fits right under the faucet and fills up in seconds. Uh, the mints in the gum. Every time you pop those mints, you'll be caring for your mouth inside and out. Boldman flavor helps keep your breath confidently fresh, and you get a boost of vitamin D, which we all need. Gum prevents cavities and freshens breath when chewed for 20 minutes after eating. So I usually use the gum when I go out to eat. It's perfect if I can't brush after I eat. Um, the Quip electronic toothbrush is loved by over 9 million mouths. In addition to brush heads, Quip also offers the fresh floss, the toothpaste, the mouthwash, and gum refills every three months for $7. If you go to getquip.com slash heybabe right now, you'll get 20% off any electric toothbrush, mint and gum dispenser, or water flosser. That's your 20%. That's 20% of any electric toothbrush, mint and gum dispenser, or water flosser and get quip. If you guys go to getquip.com slash hey babe right now, you'll get 20% off any electric toothbrush, mint and gum dispenser, or water flosser. 20% off any electric toothbrush, mint and gum dispenser, or water flosser at getquip.com slash hey babe. That's spelled G E T. Q-U-I-P dot com slash hey babe. Quip, the good habits company. All, they all committed suicide while working on a documentary called The Silent Children about widespread pedophilia trafficking. Reads the text of a Facebook post shared January 10th, but the project was canceled after Cornell's death. So the claim is, okay, now they're saying the claim is wrong on several fronts. DJ producer Avicii, professional name Tim Bergling. I see why he did it. Right. Singers Bennington and Cornell and Chef Bourdain. Play hey, imagine no it's like DJ producer Avicii, professional name Jeff Galuli. Galuli. <laughs> well, so now they're saying independent fact-checking organizations have noted that there is no connections at all. And Silent Children was abandoned five years ago for issues unrelated to the celebrities. Spokesperson said their deaths occurred after the project was already shelved. Right, so we put that we put that to bed. So we put that to bed. So a re just forget everything I said for the last five minutes. <laughs> but it's just like things like the thing is with the internet now is like those things, even like hearing Michael Jackson's like like. You know, and Pimp, you could probably speak to this because well, you know the most. Like, AI can put your voice in you wherever they want yeah, to right now, I don't right? know what this is going to... Like, like could could it... Like, right now, Pimp, if you wanted there's to... There's enough of us, but... You could put our voice anywhere. Yeah, the, and the, you're pos not e the right. possibilities are endless, and it's going to get really crazy. So the, the whole thing, so that the world doesn't get destroyed, is getting the software to, to make sure to be able to debunk and recognize when something is artificial. I don't otherwise, know that you can. Otherwise, if the truth goes away... Then we are doomed. Who is it? Pick it so, up. It's from the Bible. Live on the pod. Football bids by tonight. Football I mean, bids by tonight? Yeah. Did, All you, right. did you see this conspiracy comparing uh, Michael my, Jackson uh, my, to the uh, Egyptian pyramid sphinx? 
they're comparing Michael Jackson to the Egyptian Pyramid Sphinx. Now, I haven't seen that one, but I mean, I get it. You know the Sphinx? Do you ever hear the conspiracy about the Sphinx and the Egyptian, uh, you know, like stuff in the desert, the Sphinx, the Great Pyramid of Giza, that the Egyptians didn't make those, they discovered them? You yeah. ever heard that one? Yeah. The Egyptians just like stumbled upon it? Yeah. And that how- They're taking credit for, for the alien's big salad. Right. Yeah. Right. That's a Seinfeld reference, but by, by the way, sal- I made a salad yesterday. You ready for this? Spinach leaves, Kalamata olives. Shout out uh, Venetia. I call them Venetia olives, Kalamata. Yeah. Feta cheese. Yeah. Diced red onion. Yeah. Diced cucumbers. Sure. Um, oil vinegar. Cucumbers is a fun abbreviation. Cucumbers. I'm cucumbing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You're coming on cue. I'm coming on cue. Um, sorry, um, Q. You, you Thank God you cleared out your you, office. You, you basically, <laughs> you basically made a. Greek salad. A Greek salad. <laughs> but <laughs> let, I was bracing because you said, are you ready for this? Let me talk to you, though, about the Mediterranean diet, if I could have you for a moment. Yeah, they say it's the best, right? The Mediterranean diet, I it's mean. It's what produces gods and goddesses. And the food, though, the food, though, is fantastic. Like, like a little hummus, a little pita, not going to kill you. Yeah, not going to kill you. I know that, but I also, to- you know how I feel about hummus. Sometimes it tastes like edible throw up. It does. And it looks like, it does look like my two-year-old shit. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Depending. Like, some of it's good, and then some of it is not. Right. Does that make any sense? Sometimes I have hummus, I'm like, this is delicious hummus. And then sometimes I have and smell hummus. Yeah, not good. The one they give you on United in the box of snacks, oh my God, it, it makes me dry heat every time. I, I Can't I, do it. I open it, like, maybe this time, and I open it, it smells like fresh vom. Yeah. And then, by association, it tastes like fresh vom. By the way... I was on a flight. You know how much we fly. Prove it. I, allegedly. <laughs> I was on a flight. The worst turbulence I've ever had in my life. Sal, I was this close. Even though knowing turbulence and all that, knowing what we know, just kind of dealing with it. I was this close to texting Jasmine to be like, if something happens, like just know that. Oh, I like, my like, buddy. I, have you ever gone to that? Well, you did with the private plane when I, you told me. I did. I did with that that one. Yeah. But on a commercial airline. I've had, ter- I've had terrible <laughs> Two or three times so bad that I was white knuckling the seat and and trying to hold in my fears and tears and stuff like that. But the, that other one was like the the the, 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 the wheel didn't come down. We had to land. Uh, right. But I know the feeling. I was I was I was reduced to nothing. No, nothing. The pilot comes on about two minutes before. I was flying home from Phoenix. Two minutes before he goes. Um, he goes, listen, there's going to be some turbulence. We're going to go through some turbulence. Yeah. It's going to be fine, but it's going to get really rocky. I need the flight attendants, all the flight attendants, to sit down in the jump seats right now. Yeah. So they stop the service, sit down, which, again, I've been on a million flights. The thing that was different about this one is, I guess, I don't know if we had descended or what was happening, because we were still two hours away from New York, but the cabin, everything got dark because we were flying through like a real rain cloud where yeah. it was like dark in the cloud, almost like in the middle of like a cloud. Like for some part of it was kind of cool. I'm like, you're seeing like little like shocks of electricity and like lightning. And I was like, oh, we're in like a, a mini rainstorm yeah. that I guess they couldn't get out of the way of. Right. But the, the, the it started to like get like so violent. We were you hit alone? The, huh? Alone? Alone. You- we hit, well, I was with my one, another guy with Mike Cannon, but he wasn't sitting next okay. to me. Okay. So we hit like an air pocket, which you just like drop a thousand feet. And then the pilot, I've never, I guess because like the pilots are just even beyond used to this. He came on the thing. He was like, whoa, that was a big one. No, I swear no. to God. He, he, oh, he was like shoot. laughing through it. He goes, whoa, that was a big one. Trying, maybe he's trying to do his, his, do his thing. But like, you know, it was like people crying, people like, oh, oh, yeah. oh, like that. Oh, which no. is just like, it's like, you know, it's one of those things where like, I got to be honest with you. I know air travel has always been like tough. Um, I'm getting like um, so 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 sick of of the airports the, the there's no like nobody's working in the airports the tsa lines now if you have clear or tsa pre-check the lines are still 45 and now minutes they're trying to sell i heard they're trying to sell something like extra clear clear plus to cut the clear line right so so i'm getting to the point where i'm like you know like like you ever get let me ask you this please this, this is the thing and this could be applied to even people at home you ever start to feel, because you know, in many respects, I would assume you're living what you want your dream to be, but do you ever start to go through this and be like, this actually what, I don't know that this was my dream. Does that ever happen to you? <laughs> yeah. Where you're like, I don't know that I want to do this though. Yeah. Or is, that, or is there just parts of 
careers that some people like and some people don't like. Like, do you think the NBA players even like? You know what? This I don't want. I to think do we're this. human beings. I think we put millions of hours into this, and I think sometimes your mind is going to think about what what is. Do I still want to do this? Is am I still having fun? You take a little inventory. What else could I be doing? I want to do this, but when I start to think about how there's no retiring, like that's when I when I start to think about well, how long am I doing this? Right, and because like, we we only make money if we work, right? Like, I mean, I mean that's everybody else, but I mean, like, we have to like, well, we can control how much we work and everything like that, right? But also, we can't like if if we if we lose relevance or if people don't want us anymore, then we're gonna want to we have to try to get as much work as we can to get by, right? But we're in a luckily a, a fortunate position where right now we can dictate a little bit of the frequency of the work and everything like that. But in our, but it, you know, how long does that last? And then know. what if you, what if it stops before you want it to stop? Or what if right. you like want it to stop, but you can't because you like, you know, sometimes like I, I like, a, you know, people that have a job that they don't want to go to, like they'll, they clock in, they clock out. They, you know, they don't want to, they don't take their work home, whatever. They just like, whatever. But like, we can't do that. Right, you got to keep writing. Right, you got to keep performing. You got to, you know, you have to be a certain level on stage. So, like, I think of that. I think I'm like, all right, I'm tired. Like, I just finished like a two year tour, and I'm about to start a, another tour with the guys in, in a month. Right. And, like, and I, before that tour, I toured with them. Like, I toured with a year, then six months with them, then six months with me, then six months with them. Then I'm gonna do two years with me. So I don't stop touring. Right. And I did. I am like Jesus. I, I what if like should I become an interior designer? Maybe. Right. You know. Well, like, like I, I wouldn't. I almost been like. Sometimes I get jealous of like a nine to five. I envy, I should say. Right. Like a a nine to five. Like I, I because like, there's a beginning and my, an end. Yeah, I talk to my lady. I'm like, I just mi I miss leaving my work uh, at work, and right. then just I get home. I get home at five, six o'clock, and I'm home, and I have every night, and I have every Saturday and Sunday, and I miss things like going to the mall and stuff like that like just I, I'm like I, I told her I'm like I want to go like my first day off like yesterday was my first day I got back from Chicago and I'm like I want to run errands all day with yeah her. and we just, just want to go to CVS we ran, went and ran errands all day I was like this is the best it's amazing I, re I really mean that though I'm not being facetious like I I was like it's so nice to just drive around yeah like a, like and just do like like a, like you know the regular schedule I used to have and just remember what it was like to just like, you know, like be able to just drive around and do errands. Now my time is consumed with travel and so much that I don't get to do simple things like that. That like when you're doing them all the time, it might be annoying, but like when you never get to do anyone, I kind of miss, I miss Well, that's it. why like really Ari good. Shafir specifically has the greatest, you know, he takes four months off and like gets a flip phone and like, goes away it's unbelievable it's what he like does. it's like a beautiful it's thing unbelievable what he does i couldn't do that i couldn't be away from family that long right but um put your christmas tree up yet i did, did i put it up the tuesday before thanksgiving wow how you like me now real fake fake -a i had a uh, fake -a seven years good. ago when i moved into my where i moved in i had a real one and it was a lot of hass and then i went to costco and i picked up this pre-lit nine footer things like butter man Dude. So I had seven seven years now. I take it out. I put it up. You put the pole inside the other pole. It's like four pole, four parts. All the lights are already on. It lights up. Boom. You get colored lights or white lights, and it falls into shape. My, when we were younger, do you remember shaping the tree? Yes. Step up. It's bad enough that you have to go step back. Well, not bad. That's part of the, it. Should be part of the fun and put the, the stuff on equally. But the shaping of the tree was 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 also a thing. See, I was. See, this is why you don't. You, you got to just communicate with friends because I was going to sheepishly and embarrassingly and kind of in a forgiving tone. In an asking for forgiveness tone, tell you that for the first time in my life, for me and my family, we got a pre-lit tree. And I want to tell you that I'm sorry that maybe, you know, that's you don't condone that behavior and that's not right. And I'm taking the spirit of Christmas away. But my kids don't mind it. They like it. They had fun putting it up. And all I have to do is press a button and it goes on and off. And it has made my life so much simpler where it would one now we have that tree in perpetuity we can close it put it in a box put it in the basement and i don't and they will they it's can't. a tree in a box. box tree in a box girl yeah. the my kids each have five christmas ornaments that they love and they put each one of them up and it's all good you streamlined it bro i've streamlined the the pre lit tree a, is a, a GC. Bad it's a game changer. Mm -hmm. You got to call it for what it is. Does it take away from a little bit of the tradition and the process of that? Yes. Do I mind? Not particularly these days, 
My time is limited, and so anything can give me a step ahead, I'm all for the convenience. If I had more time, would I want to be more of a purist? Possibly. Got it. Does that give you really any answer either way? No. No. You're like Venetia reading you the definition of sick. Right. Didn't help at all. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't help at all. It actually no, got I me further it. from the truth. <laughs> I knew I was going to be gone in Chicago for a week, and I didn't want to come back in the, after the first week of December, still not having it up, still looking forward to doing that. You go deep dish in so Chicago? Where'd you go? I What'd did. You Lou Malnati. Lou Malnati. People say Pequa. Whoa, Lou Malnati. Lou Malnati, but it sounds like Illuminati. Pequods, Maybe. They, the Pequods, they I say. I want to try them. They're, they're one of the people I haven't tried yet. You ready for this? Yeah. I went to the original Pequods. I did a show in Hammond, Indiana a month ago or two months ago. It was me, Sergio Chacon, and my tour manager, Tommy, uh, a.k.a. Tommy Wheels. And we go to Pequods. I call ahead. They said, we'll get your ride in. Get your ride in. Beautiful. We had a show. We go in. We're sitting there. Guy comes over. We're in. We go... Uh, you know, we'd like the pepperoni deep dish, whatever their famous one is. He goes, it's about two hours for the pizza. What? I said, but they seated you. But I'm seated. They said, yeah, no, we know you can get appetizers, but the pizza is just, it's going to take two hours. And is that, is that the par for the course there? Like people know? No. I, yeah, I, guess I, they, I went to DeFaro when it was busy and they were like, it's about a 45 to an hour minute wait for a pizza. Right. And I was like, all right, now wait. And, and it was worth it. I it stood, was worth it. I stood on the street and ate it. But like, but the two hours when you're there is... They don't let you know that ahead of time. Maybe you, people are in the know already, or was it just a particular night? Something happened with the oven. Or no, that's, I think that's it was like a well, it was a Saturday at five o'clock. We had a show at seven. Two hours. Two hours. And then you know what? This is how good people are. The, there was a person next to us who had waited two hours. We got their pizza. They had one slice left. There was the three of us. They were like, "Would you like you boys like the the last slice?" And, and you were like, "There's three of us. What? The, what do you? What do you even?" I was like, "Yeah. Well, how do I know? Well, what your would you mouth want to fight over it?" Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and so I took out a billy club and I hit her right in That's the knees. That's exactly right. I said, I'll do what Galuli did. That's right. Pe more people should do what Galuli did if it's wor if it's if it's justified. I think the name of this episode should be What Would Galuli Do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> WWGD. That's it. What would Galuli do? That's it. That's so think it. about that. We want you to close your eyes right now and think about a scenario you've been in recently that you couldn't handle differently or you needed advice. And think about what would Jeff Galuli do? What would Jeff Stone do? What would Galuli do? do? And also 71 neighborhoods of Chicago, send it in one breath. You will get flown out to a, hey, babe, we'll take care of you. But it has to be 71. You cannot miss a beat. And we have the judges. We have actually Tanya Harding judging it. Yeah. And if we suspect foul play that you're reading it, we're not going to let you know, but there's going to be a BC waiting for you. You know what's going to happen. You're going to get a Galulied. Billy Club. <laughs> yeah. Yes. A, All right. A big Billy Club. A, a BBC. A BBC. Okay. All right. God bless. Love BBC. This has been Hey Baby. This has been Hey Baby.